I'm Wes Watkins, and this is the first episode of the Life That Created My Own Sound series. I'm very excited today because we're going to be talking about depression. We're going to be talking about mental health, um, a lot of issues that that goes on that we are afraid to speak on because we're we're afraid, we're embarrassed, or we don't want people to resent us, or you know, just a whole different a lot of things that play a part in why we don't like to discuss these different things, these different issues that go on with us. So I wrote a book called The Life That Created My Own Sound. And in the book, I discuss uh, depression, I discuss alcoholism, uh, abortions, fighting for custody for my son, um, walking away from music, um, finding your identity and where I am today and a whole list of other things. And so I think it's very important for us to discuss these things and to deal with a lot of the issues that go on, that we deal with on a personal level internally because a lot of times you don't deal with the issues, it'll deal with you and you'll let it fester and you'll let it build. And the next thing you know, you're sitting there drinking your life away and trying to kill yourself. Man, depression is a hard thing to really um, admit to. It's something that it's embarrassing because you feel like you're weak. You feel like, um, you feel embarrassed because it's, it's, for me, I felt that way because I didn't feel as confident about myself. I didn't feel like a man and I felt that because I was depressed that people had a, had an advantage over me. People. Um, I wasn't as good as the next person or I, I shouldn't have been in certain rooms with certain people or um, I'm not worthy to do this or do that. And the problem is that we allow a lot of our issues to make us think that we're something we're really not. And so um, I know at a, at a young age, you know, you, you grow up and you, you have friends, you chill with stuff like that. And, Sometimes you think certain people are for you when they're really not. And because you're young, you don't truly understand it. And a lot of times, you know, you go through hurt and you go through things of people doing stuff to you. And sometimes kids take it one way and sometimes kids, they don't care. I was one of those kids, I was one of those teenagers that I took a lot of my issues to heart. And so a lot of times when I was around people and they would talk about me and you know, it got to a point where I was talked about so much that in front of people I could laugh it off and I could I could be cool, I could be confident, but when I go home, I was I would break it down. I never forget the first time I really when I really look back at when I started getting depressed, I, I chased the root problem back. And at the age of 17, I remember some uh, some people I used to chill with, they they talk about me to the point of it, it it broke me all the way down and I never forget like I plotted how I was going to take them out and I plotted this thing all the way out to the T and 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 of course I didn't go through with it <laughs> but it's it's like I never thought that I would get to that to that mental space and so I pushed it to the side and I didn't really deal with it. And then the more and more certain things in my life started happen, happening, I just pushed it to the side. And so all this time that everything's happening that's going on, it's literally just building up, it's building up. And then I go through relationships, I go through abortions, and I got females in my head, oh, you know, we, 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 you don't want to matter to this, and you get an abortion, and then it's, you're trying to sweep that under the rug and be like, oh, nah, it's cool, but because you don't deal with it, you, you, you keep on moving. So then I'm sitting there fighting in court for my son to make sure I can see him and I'm going through all of that stuff. And so I'm not showing it to everybody, but I'm not really dealing with it. So I'm putting that under the rug and I'm and I'm going. And the next thing you know, for me, the way to cope with it, I drink, I drink, I drink, I drink, I drink, I drink. And it became excessive. It became to the point where, you know, I'm waking up two or three o'clock in the morning and I'm drinking, drinking three or four or five. I was working at a bank. I was at the bank, drunk, majority of the time. I was a functioning alcoholic. I did it very well. And it, it, it messed up a lot of areas in my life because, because it got me to a point where I didn't want to deal with people and I didn't want to deal with my issues. So because I didn't want to deal with people and I didn't want to deal with my issues, I, I stayed to myself. I backed up from everybody. I backed up from those closest to me, I pushed them away. Um, I pushed a lot of people away. I messed up a lot of different relationships. And so 
because of that, it drove me into a deep, dark place. Like, I think I was at a place of no return. And if you've ever been depressed or you ever gone through that, you know, it's number one, you gotta make sure you, you talk to somebody. You have to say something because sometimes we think it's not that serious, but it really is that serious. You never know what you would do until you're pushed to a certain limit. And so when I really went into that deep, dark place, I learned that for myself, I didn't have no, no, no boundaries. I remember, um, I think I was about 25 or 26, and I was that was when I, I was still in that real bad headspace, and a situation occurred with with another person, and it got to the point where I told him like, I, I will seriously kill you because at that time I was trying to kill myself, so I don't care about my own life. What will make you think that I care about your life? And the, some of the things that I said and did, it really, when I look back on it, it really had me at an all. Like, I really can't believe that I was that far gone. But the only reason is because I didn't want to deal with everything that was in front of me. Why? Because you think you're going to be judged or you're, you're going to feel embarrassment or you're going to feel hurt or you're going to hurt people and people are not going to deal with you anymore. People are not going to want to mess with you. They're not going to like you. And the thing is, a lot of times you can't care or worry about what, every, what everybody else thinks or says about you. I'm not, I'm not meant for everybody to like. But in the same token, for everything that I've done in my life, there's certain consequences for it. You have to be willing to deal with the issues and deal with the consequences that come with those issues, whatever, whatever you've done. And so because at the time my character wasn't ready, you know, and it's, I, 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 I used to always hear this saying, um, my man used to tell me, you know, your gift can take you when your character's not ready to go. And I had a gift, but my character wasn't right. My character wasn't right because I wasn't mature enough to deal with issues. I wasn't mature enough to stand up to things I did. I wasn't mature enough to, I was, I was, I was good to do things in the dark. But when it come to light, I wasn't good. And so the thing is, we have to get to a place where I'm in a place now where anything I do, I stand for it. And I, I stand by it. Why? Because I understand that if I make a decision to do something, you also have to be able and be willing to accept anything that comes along with it, whether it's good or whether it's bad. You have to deal with it. So... Here I am now, so I'm going through all of the, the motions of nobody likes me, nobody loves me, people don't mess with me. And a lot of times when you chase your, when you trace your problem back, you trace the root of the problem back, it leads to you and the decisions that you decide to make or what you decided to do or what you decided not to do. And so, as a man, you're taught that you shouldn't run from your 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 problems, your issues. You stand by, you man up, you fight for it. And a lot of times, we don't want to fight and we don't want to stand by the wrongs that we do because we don't want to be viewed in a certain way. And sometimes I know for me, I had a lot of pressure on me and I felt as though I was put on a certain level and I never wanted to let people around me down. I didn't want to let my son down. I didn't want to let the kids that looked up to me, I didn't want to let them down. I didn't want to let the people I worked with down because I felt like I would be the biggest letdown and I wouldn't be able to come back from it. And not that anybody said that, but that's how your mind thinks. That's how your mind operates. And you know, it's, it's you get to a place where you don't want to run anymore. I got to a place of I'm, I'm done fighting. I'm done hiding. Like, the enemy can really get in your mind and make you think you're something you're not. That's why it's, that's why it's very important. I say this all the time. It's very important for people to know your identity because nobody can tell you something that you're not. So when negative words are being spoken over you, uh, it won't affect you. For me now, nobody can say anything to me. I'm confident in who I am. I know who I am. You can call me stupid. You can call me anything you want to call me. 
but I won't bend, I won't fold. Why? Because I know who I am. So when I was going through that season of, of depression, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my what my full purpose was. I couldn't operate in who I was supposed to be because I didn't know who I was. So anything that happened, anybody that talked about it, talked about me, I went with it. It got to the point where I had no confidence in myself and I spoke negative over myself 24-7. It got to a point where nobody else had to say anything about me. I thought I was nothing. I thought I was worthless. I had no self-value. I had no worth for myself. I didn't think I was good on drums. I didn't think I was a good father. I didn't think I was a good friend. I didn't think I was a good son, a good brother. The whole nine, I put these, I helped put these things in my head myself and it drove me into one of the deepest, darkest places I've ever been and I will never ever go back again in life. Why? Because I know that if I was to ever go back to that place, there's no, there's no way in hell that I would return because of how far gone I was. That's why every day I make it a thing to, to wake up and, and speak well of myself. I tell myself something positive every single day. I don't care what's going on. Every situation I go through, even the situations that I go through that look bad. You know what, God? Hey, I appreciate you for waking me up to even go through the situation. I'm at that point. You have to make sure that you find the positive in the negative, no matter what it is. Because when you don't, that negative you allow it to fester on your life, man, I'm trying to tell you, it's something that you do not want to deal with. And to anybody that's watching this, that's gone through and that's gone through a whole nother life, it's people that's probably gone through it worse than I am. You, have, you can't be afraid to talk about it. You can't be afraid to get help. You can't be afraid to speak to somebody. I don't care who it is, speak to. For me, the one thing that kept, well, the couple of things that kept me here is prayer and God. Because there was people praying over me that ain't know me from scratch. It was people in the church praying for me. My mother was praying for me. That ain't even know half of what I was going through. But them prayers helped me because I'm gonna tell you this. The final day that I tried to take my life, I tried to take my life a few times throughout my life because I, I, I really felt as though I was done with life. That's where I got to. I just didn't want no more parts of life. And that was one of the most selfish things that I could ever do and that I could ever think. Yeah, so. I remember um, the day that I tried to take my life, man, it was one of the most selfish things and one of the most selfish thoughts that I've ever thought or tried to do in my life because it, at that time, of course, my son was born. And um, that morning, I got to a place where I was just like, you know what, I'm done. I don't care, like, I'm done. And so, I wrote the um I wrote the letter on the computer to my fan. I never even told him this. And um I wrote him this letter and I was just basically like, man, I'm I'm sorry, but disappointed y'all. And I'm um tell Damari I love him. And stuff like that. So I got my son, I took him to school. I gave him this big hug. I'm like, I love you. And so I left, hit the liquor store, and I had all these pills, man. And I, um, I just kept taking them. I just like, man, I'm done. Like, God, you want me? Here I come. I'm done. I'm good. I just kept taking the pills. I kept drinking Jack. Taking pills, drink. Taking pills, drink. Taking pills, drink. And so, I literally remember like, I was I was sitting down uh, up, up on my bed. And so I literally just felt like my soul just like kind of like fading. I, I, you know, like kind of blacking out. I ain't, I ain't know what it was. Like it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but um, I know like, this is probably about nine, 10 in the morning. And so then, like some hours later, like, I think it was like around three or something like that. Like I opened my eyes, but I, I'm so far gone, I ain't, I ain't really know where I was. I, 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 I was in La La Land, I thought I was dead, honestly, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I crawled up, got in the bathroom, and I looked at myself, man, my face looked like death, like, as black as I am, 
uh, kind of looking pale. Can't even, <laughs> can you imagine that? My little chocolate behind looking pale. And, um, you know, I had all these messages on my phone because it was like, there was one main person that, that knew what was going on and, you know, she was hurt, crying the whole night. And um, I had these messages from my son's school. And one thing I never did that day, I never hollered at anybody to pick my son up from school. So he was still at school in the office. And um, he was uh, he left a voice message and he was just like, like daddy, you know, like, where are you? Nobody's picking up. And they, I guess they try to call my mom, they try to call my brother, my father, my sister, my father. Everybody, nobody picking up anyways. I, I, I really just tried to get myself together because I'm like, man, I got a kid, whatever. And I ended up making it to the school a little later on. And I don't know what it was that day. Like, I, I don't, when I went in there, when I opened the door to go into the, the office to get my son, my man, he, he jumped in my arm and gave me like one of the biggest hugs ever. And all I could do was just sit there and cry. And it made me realize how selfish I could be because I didn't want to deal with my own issues. And that was the first day that I really had to take a step back and find a way to try to take ownership for things I've done. And I had to try to go back and redo a lot of things and well undo a lot of things that I had already did because I wanted to sweep things under the rope under the rug and I didn't want to deal with things because you know I was afraid of what people were saying. Like I said, you get to the point where you don't care what people say or what people think about you. You can't it's not my job to to care or worry about what somebody else thinks about me. I can't I don't have time for it. Why? Because I have to keep doing what I'm doing. I have to I have to walk in I have to walk in the line that God has laid out for me. I gotta walk in that path. I gotta keep making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. What I was put here on this earth to do, help impact lives, help make sure that I'm doing doing my gift. You know, writing a book, playing drums, being a father, doing all these other things. That's what I'm supposed to be doing plus more. And if I'm worried about what everybody else says or thinks about me, I can't, I, it's a distraction. It's something that holds me back. And at the end of the day, you get to a point where my story has to be heard. Nobody else gonna tell my story. I ain't gonna let nobody else tell my story, period. You gonna hear my story from me, how it happened, from Wes. Nobody else gonna tell it. Nobody's gonna be able to tell it like me because it's my story. So now I'm at the point where I can stand up for everything I did that was wrong. I can, I can, I can, I can stand by my situations and the problems I caused and the things I did. I'm free, you know, I, I, I got to a place where I had to go and ask for forgiveness from a lot of people, right? Because that depression, man, it will put you in a place where, where you operate and you push people away from you and you, 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 you act bad towards certain people and you do certain things and you do this and you do that and you break up relationships, you break up friendships, you break up uh, 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 things in your family. You do all these things because you didn't want to deal with the issues that you were going through, the situation that you were going through, you know, so I had to get to a place where I had to get help. I had to get to a place where I had to have somebody I could speak to. I had to get to a place where I could deal with it and keep on moving because at the end of the day, you got to understand just because I dealt with the issues, right? That doesn't mean that everybody's everybody's clapping, that everybody's on your side. Now. Doesn't mean that everybody rock with you, but you have to be strong enough to understand that. Because like I said, with everything that you do, there are good consequences and there are bad consequences. For a lot of the things that I've done, there are a lot of people that left out of my life because of certain things that I've done. But I had to really, I had to really uh, man up and accept that. And it's okay. It's okay. And I had to ask for forgiveness. Some forgave, some didn't. And for the ones that didn't, I understand it. I can't now. The thing is, I can't be stuck with it because they didn't forgive me. I have to move on. And so that's where I am now. Man, so where I am right now, I'm in a great place. Um, I'm in a place where I never thought that I could get to. And, you know, when you look back over everything that you've gone through, I appreciate it. I appreciate, um, now, don't get it twisted, if I could redo and not go through depression, hey, sign me up for it, I would do it. But the thing is, is that I appreciate the process that it took to get me 
to this place because it built me up to where I am now. It, it, it built me up to, to have a different standard for myself and I learned how to deal with issues. I learned how to um, not sweep stuff under the rug. I learned how to face everything head first, you know? And I think it's very important that people in general do that, especially as men, because a lot of times as men, we don't like to discuss our issues. We don't like to let people in. We, we try to stay, we try to stand firm and all this stuff. And you know, you go home and it's eating you up, it's killing you and stuff like, man, a lot of times as men, I'm just speaking straight, I'm circling all the way to my men. We have to deal with our issues. We have to deal with things that are keeping us up at night. We have to talk to somebody. We have to deal. The reason why is because we have kids that are looking at us. Our, our, our sons and our daughters and or the kids we mentor, they're looking up at us. And we have to make sure that we're around for them. I want to make sure that I'm around for mine so that when they need me, I'm there. I don't want to be off uh, uh, in a deep, dark place. I don't want to. I don't want them to see that. I don't want them to see me like that. I want them to see, oh, hey, my dad, he, he, my dad, he's, he's, he was able to face everything. My dad was able to deal with stuff. My dad didn't run. And I want to teach them to do the same exact thing. So we got to make sure that we're dealing with those things so that we can show our kids and show everybody else that they can succeed even if they have all hell going on around them. I think it's very important for that. And so that's why, that's one of the main reasons that made me want to write my book, The Life That Created My Own Sound. Again, not just the, uh, Got my own sound is not just talking about the drums, it's not just talking about music. You know, when you're your own person, you have, you create your own lane. It's you. The world needs you. That's your own sound. You have the own your own thing about you. The world needs you. The world doesn't need another person. So, you know, the life that created my, my own sound is everything I went through that created me to be me. The West that you see in front of you today. The one that's on IG, acting a fool, posting the funny. I, I, I'm, I am who I am and I always make sure that I stay in good spirits because of the process that I went through. So that's all I want to do and I, I, I want to tell y'all, man, to make sure that whatever you deal with, man, face it head on. Don't worry about what anybody else is saying to you. Don't worry about if somebody tell you that you can't make it, that you can't do it, that you can't do this, you can't do that. It's not your job to worry about what anybody else thinks about you or what anybody else says about you. It's your job to make sure that you're operating fully in your purpose and going forward in your destiny and what you're supposed to do. If you were sitting here to impact live, impact live. If you were sitting here to be the manager of, of the, the, the bank or the KFC, you know, me personally, I say go to Chipotle, but hey, manager of KFC, do that. <laughs> Make sure you get there and you do it, but don't let anybody tell you any differently. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very excited because the next show that we're going to have, I'm going to have a special guest that's going to be on here. And now we're going to start getting other people's stories of their life of what they've been through and uh, how they got from and how they got through their depression and where they're at now. So I want to thank y'all for tuning in, man. I'm very excited. Again, the life that created my own sound. Make sure that you get the book on Amazon. It's called The Life That Created My Own Sound. You can follow me on social media at West underscore got my own sound on Instagram. Wes Watkins on Facebook and Wes Watkins on Twitter. Thank you. I appreciate y'all, man. Enjoy your day.